Hey guys, happy homebrew Wednesday. Actually on a Wednesday, if I can get this uh, uploaded tonight, it'll actually come out on a Wednesday, so it'll be nice. So, got a homebrew review to do. Uh, I got a couple of uh, footage, or a little couple of minutes of footage of a brew from this weekend. So, we'll kind of uh, go through a couple things here, and then uh, I'll show you guys some of the footage. So, the homebrew review, Exit 12. This is pretty awesome. Always Faithful, Semper Fi. This is our West Coast IPA. Uh, this is, I know uh, Nick and Brandon from Exit 12 uh, put this together. Great job on the, the label. Love it. I think uh, if I remember correctly, they use uh, Photoshop on this. This is, uh, makes me want to really get into making labels like this. So, uh, love the fact they can as well. Uh, they put a donation to Semper Fi Foundation for this. So, um, it's got, uh, give you a couple of stats, 6.2% alcohol. I uh, use 2018 Veterans Blend. I believe that's a uh, Yakima Chief blend. Um, there's a whole bunch of hops in that I've, I've read. I can't remember all of them, but Centennial, I think Cashmere, a uh, bunch of hops. And there might be five or six hops that are in that. So never used it myself, but uh, uh, I'd like to. So this will give you a good idea of what this is. So we'll get into this, guys. Using my uh, brew tuber's glass. A little hiss there on it. Let's see how kind of pour we can get here. That's a good looking beer to start here. I know Nick was really impressed with the clarity on it. So I saw a picture on uh, on Discord, maybe a, in the last week or so. All right. Good carbonation coming up through there. Oh yeah, that's, you can see, probably if I turn it this way, just, oh yeah, you guys can see that label right through here. Real nice clarity. I think the clarity showing up as well on the, uh, on the camera as it is in person, but all right, it's going to nose on this. Oh, that's a nice, got a nice little, nice malt backbone to it. The hops are definitely there. You get some, uh, some pine there. A little bit of resin. That's a great looking beer, guys. Nice job, Exit 12. Brandon and Nick. All right, slaunch you, gents. Oh, that's good. I like that. It's got a nice balance. Um, got a little malt sweetness there, not cloyingly sweet at all with that. Uh, I'd say fairly, uh, I'd say medium to low body, but not, not a bad way. Uh, fairly dry on the tongue, falls off the palate pretty good. Uh, bitterness is not a, a punch you in the face bitterness, but it's a, a nice solid bitterness, bitterness that goes with that. Um. There's a there's a nice malt backbone that, that really melds well with the with the hops. Yeah, you definitely get that that pine that resin. Um, you know, right in the back of your your palate, you get that uh, that nice hop flavor that just sits on the back of your palate. Maybe a little little citrus that might come through with a little bit. More, more pine and resin is what I'm getting out of it. That's a great beer. I really enjoy that, guys. Thank you very much for sending that to me. I appreciate that. Man, I'd be, I'd be proud as heck if I was able to uh, do a beer like that. Real clean. Uh, no off flavors. I don't get anything that... Uh, That'd be critical. And, and Nick and I talked about it this weekend. No, get into that a little bit. We uh, we had a, uh, a brew day set up. I've got a collab scheduled to go with Exit 12. I've been talking about it for probably, oh, geez, four or five, six months maybe. Talking about trying to get together and do something. And we finally got our schedules worked out. Uh, so Nick and I were talking about this and talking about, you know, grading someone's beer and not being critical just to be critical but to give constructive criticism. So when you send beers out that you actually want, don't go just looking for faults. Make sure you find some, some good things about the beer, but also I want constructive criticism. So how do I get better as a brewer? How do I improve my craft? And uh, I guess the only thing I guess I can knock you on a little bit, Nick, would be carbonation maybe. And that's probably from canning and traveling. I mean, that's hard. I bet you, I know I saw a picture of this off the keg and carbonation's fine. So as you're seeing it, it's still got bubbles going through. But we had a, a conversation talking about how you how do you judge a beer and, and make sure that you're um, getting some good feedback on it. So 
I'd have a hard time saying anything about recipe design, um, hops. I think that's a, that's a great beer. I would be really, really proud of that beer if I, if I made that. So that's a great job, guys. So as I was saying, we were, we were uh, going to brew this weekend. And unfortunately, we ran into a snag in the scheduling stuff. So we uh, had to pivot. I uh, just backed it up a, a weekend or two. Um, but ended up having an opportunity to brew anyways. Um, I did a dark mild. And Nick was going to brew anyways. Uh, Brandon, unfortunately, wasn't able to be there. And uh, so Nick and I got on Zoom and we brewed Saturday morning. So I've got some video of that I'll put on here after this. Um, had a great morning. Uh, shot the breeze. It was nice to, to just catch up with some one of the guys on BrewTubers and see what's going on. Uh, so I did a, a dark mild. I show this uh, recipe online. So if you're interested in it at all, it's my first attempt at it. I, uh, I was, uh, as you said, we had a, had a collab going. So I decided I still wanted to brew and I'd been considering doing a dark mild. I'd heard people talk about it. I've had maybe one or two excuse me and uh i got an opportunity to brew in a place here in town on a five barrel system it was just a uh, a facebook um, open invitation anybody want to come brew and give the brewer a hand you could do it so it was at sager beer works is here in rochester and uh had a great day awesome time brewing with a guy uh, super open with what was going on as a five barrel system we got a chance to, to try a lot of his beers and one of them was a dark mild and I was really really impressed with it low ABV I think it was like a three and a half percent around that range very flavorful um, just a, a great beer I had it twice during the day at the during the course of the day he gave us little sample glasses that we could have as the, going through and we got our hands right in there and brewed and moved um, moved hoses and, and chilled and drop tops, you know, do the whole nine yards just on a big system, which was really cool to see how that all really works. Um, but, uh, but we got a chance to sit down at the end. It was just the three of us, the brewer and one other guy that was able to stay. And I was able to talk to him about the dark mild and, uh, uh, he used Carafa too. Um, I think he used an actual, um, English malt, I think like a Maris Otter. I didn't have all of that. Um, and he used uh, SO4 and I had that. So I ended up using, uh, I think two or three pounds of Maris Otter. I had some leftover from the collab I did with uh, Matt at Rec Brewing on our Scottish Ale. And that is in, let's see, that's in number three. We're doing a uh, set it and forget it on the carbonation on that, give it a chance to uh, condition a little bit, you know, 9.2%. Um, so hopefully here, maybe next week, you can try that on the uh, on Humber Wednesday and see if it's up to carbonation and ready to go. So I can ship some of that out to Matt. Um, but I had some Maris Otter, I had Viking Pale, so then I put uh, Caroma, uh, Crystal 40, and Carafa 2. So I know for a fact he did the, the English malt as a base and the Carafa 2. The other specialty malts are not positive, and then he used SO4 on his, and I really liked it. So gave it a try and see how it worked out. So um, Nick was brewing Sam. That was the beer that they had done so well with in the, in the Boston Brew Competition. I believe they won or took first place in overall or in their in the uh, category I'm not sure uh, Nick if you guys are branded you guys want to throw that in the comments down below I apologize if I've got that wrong but I'm pretty sure they want a, a medal if not winning it all together so I can see why after drinking this is impressive you guys do a really nice job so um, let's see what, what else is going on um, so I did the mild I also i uh, got a homemade keg cleaner, and uh, I put that on there as well. I've got a cl clip of how that works, so I don't know if anybody's ever interested in making their own keg cleaner, fermentation cleaner. Uh, I've got a pond pump that I use for uh, moving the water through my chiller out of my pool and back in, and I use that a lot. I use it in a keg cleaner as well, and I leave that a, a little clip in there. So if anybody's interested in how I built it, if you need more information, I'm more than willing to, to share. I try to use as much stuff as I have around so if it's a multi-use tool, I love to have multi-use things in the brewery or around. So this pump is, is something I use quite a bit with. So I leave a little bit with that. And then uh, I've sent me a second batch of uh, Tap Out IPA. That's the uh, recipe I got from Gary. And that is, uh, I actually kicked the keg already. Um, gave a bunch away just to have people try it and see what they think. 
so far it's gotten a lot of a lot of really good reviews i also did a uh a mix sour so this is uh one of the cans i've got so i it's a 50 50 mix uh the tap out ipa it's a nipa and then a sour that i've made it's called searching for shade with pineapple mango uh guava so i actually have a fermenter sitting right over there i just put in uh, four pounds of fruit in it it was a kettle sour so my hope is here that i can keg that this weekend give it a day or two probably friday or saturday i can keg that uh, then i can carbonate it and then i'll have the uh have the ability to can up some uh, some tap out sour and ship those around a little bit and then give them away as Christmas presents as well. That has gotten into is I'll uh, pack up a four pack of, uh, of cans and give them away. So, all right, well, I think I've rambled on here for almost 11 minutes and I've got some brew footage, so I don't want this to be on forever. So, um, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, again, if you get an opportunity to check this out from Exit 12, highly recommend it. Always faithful. Great job, guys. I'm, in, I'm super, super impressed. Great beer. Um, also be on the lookout for a uh, possible experiment coming out here in the new year, January, February time. Brewers are talking about doing a possibly another yeast experiment. I'm not sure yet. Uh, maybe a Kavik yeast, Kavik yeast, Kavik yeast, however you say it. I know I'm probably saying it wrong, but whatever it is. Or Cezanne yeast, uh, something like that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I've thrown my name in the, the ring to possibly be a hub for that to, to help out. So we'll see how that goes as well. But all right, guys, again, rambling forever here. So apologize for so long. Hope you guys have a great one and hope you enjoy the brew footage. Have a great day. Salon to gents. All right, guys, got a Saturday morning brew day. Uh, it's supposed to be a collab with Exit 12. Uh, unfortunately, we had to switch that up a little bit, some scheduling stuff. So we just backed it up a couple of weeks, but uh, I've got a hook up with Nick at Exit 12. He is doing a brew day this morning. He's a little bit ahead of me. It's a little after 9 Saturday morning. So I decided I'm going to do a dark mild. So yesterday afternoon, I got my water together. Salts are all in. Uh, I've never done one before, so this is the recipe that I came up with. Um, it's supposed to be a, a low alcohol, a little flavorful. Um, I've had it before, but I've never made one before. So I kind of looked around to see what I had for actual ingredients. So this is the grist here. So I didn't have Maris Otter. I actually had a little bit of Maris Otter left over from my Scotch Ale, so that's in there, but it's not full. I think it's five and a half pounds. Uh, it says Viking Pale there. It's probably two pounds of Maris Otter, and the rest is Viking Pale. And then Cararoma, Caramel 40, and Carafa 2. Those are all things I had laying around the house so I figured well for the first time through this I'll try it going through the stuff I had uh, we had a pivot kind of last minute anyways um, from our collab brew day so I'm using uh, SO4 I'm using an English ale yeast on this and um, a full um, full dark full on the excuse me medium full I got to remember what I I put in there in terms of the water profile that I used on it so all right, I'll try to catch some video here as we're going through the brew day. So I'm going to try to get it heating up here and going. We're at 40 degrees and get to warm the warm the place up out here in the brew house. So Saturday in December, a little bit chilly, but at least we're indoors. All right, guys, hope everybody's having a great weekend so far. All right, we are almost done with the mash. We're about 10.33 right now. All right, so Nick is in his boil. I think he's about halfway through his boil. I just finished the mash here. So I'll give you a, see if we can take a look there. He's just draining the mash off now. So far, so good. I'm hitting numbers a little low on my pH. I think I ended up at five here. Nine bricks on my pre-boil. So I don't think I said before, we're putting saws in this. Uh, two... Two times, where am I at here? Uh, Going to be an ounce and a quarter each, once at 60 and once at 5 minutes. So, should end up at about 20 IBUs on this. So, alright guys, I'm going to try to catch a couple hot drops here as we move along. Alright, we are up to a boil. This is one and a quarter ounce of check size. Alright, there we go guys. 60 minutes.
All right, five minutes left to go in the boil. Just dropped the last ounce and a quarter of size. All right, guys, I thought I might show you what I use for my keg washing system. So uh, a lot of people use the, the Mark uh, keg washing system. I basically looked online. I'm cheap, so fortunately it's snowing out here, so <laughs> it would be a little interesting doing this. But basically what I'm using is I have a pond pump, same pond pump I use for pumping water through my chiller out of my pool. It's uh, definitely a couple of gallons a minute. So this is a bigger pond pump. Uh, it's got pretty good push through it. Uh, I took a piece of PVC, put a top on it, put a bunch of holes screwed into there, took a flared fitting, put some line on it so that I can run it back up through the out port on my kegs as I go through it. So that way, uh, if you can see on the inside, so you can clean the inside of that, your dip tube, you're going through. So, um, and I can change, I use pin locks for fermenting. So I'm cleaning my fermenter first and then I'm gonna clean a, uh, my serving, which is ball lock. So I just switch those over um, and they're just the, the screw on types. So that way you can ch switch between the two. So um, that's what I'm using. Um, and this is just a piece of hose. That's just a uh, clamp on the end of that. So I can get it to work. Um, I think what I used is, uh, let's see here see if I've got it on there so what is that one inch one inch pipe so just to, like Home Depot sells it by you know the two foot length I just bought a cap for it um, so it works for me so I'll get this set up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's running all right that's the finished product I think we're right around 1038 uh, a couple points high it's supposed to be around that 1036 range so put it in the fermenter and she is waiting to ferment now. Alright, so that's the keg washing system that I've set up. So I've got the two pieces of metal. That's actually the old tent stakes over the top of it. Pumps in the inside, so just a submersible pump. I got the pin lock fitting on there, so I'm running the cleaner through that. And I have, uh, this one actually has a floating dip tube in it. So that way it don't get caught with all the junk and stuff in there, the dry hop and that type of stuff. So just goes right back into it and let it run good hot water cleaner in there. Let it run for 10-15 minutes and I'll switch over and move the other keg on top of it and just change the fitting on the end. So I don't know if this will help somebody out. It's a cheap way to doing a homemade uh, keg cleaner and fermenter cleaner for me as well. So all right, uh, I gotta get back inside and check my boil.